Hey there, welcome back to another Make Science Easy Physics lesson. In this lesson, we're going to be having a look at what mass and weight are. We're going to be finding out how they're similar and how they are different to each other. So first of all, let's start off with what is mass? Because before we can really understand what weight is, we need to understand what mass is. Now, what's really, really important to point out is that in everyday language, we use the terms mass and weight interchangeably. And even scientists will use the words in the wrong manner in everyday language. However, they do not mean the same thing in science. In science, mass and weight are linked, but they are very, very different. Now, mass is a measure of the amount of matter that something is physically made up of. So when we talk about mass, we're really talking about how much stuff or matter something is made up of. And we measure mass in grams or kilograms. So these are our SI units of mass. Now, the mass of an object is constant. It cannot be changed by gravity or by any other force. Forces do not change mass. And this is really, really important. Essentially, mass is constant no matter where you are in the universe. So mass can only be changed by adding or removing matter to something. So as we said already, mass and weight are not the same, but they are linked. So mass, how much matter something is made of, and mass cannot be changed by a force. Now, weight is different to mass. Weight is a force. And it is a measurement of the effect that gravity has upon the mass of an object. So mass is how much matter something is made up of. And weight is the force applied to that mass dependent on the force of gravity. And the unit of weight, and in fact the unit of all forces, is newtons, or n. So, gravitational field strength is a measurement of the force exerted on a mass due to gravity. And gravitational field strength is, for all intents and purposes, equal to the acceleration due to gravity. So on Earth, gravity, which we know is equal to 9.81 meters per second squared, or we can round up to 10 meters per second squared. So the gravitational field strength on Earth is 9.81 newtons per kilogram, or we can round it up for simplicity to 10 newtons per kilogram. Because gravity is pulling down at 9.81 meters per second squared, a mass of one kilogram has a weight of 9.81 newtons. So we can round these to 10 newtons per kilogram for simplicity. And we need to know this equation. It's a very simple equation, but it's a very important one. Weight is equal to mass times g, and g is our gravitational field strength, or w equals mg. These are really important equations that you are going to need to apply. Okay, so let's have a look in a bit more detail about how mass, weight, and gravity are linked together. So, any object that has mass, which is essentially every single thing in the universe, has its own gravitational field strength. So this means that any object with mass is attracted to any other object with mass. Now, Generally, the greater the object's mass, the greater that force is going to be. So the Earth is attracted to the Sun, but the Sun is also attracted back to the Earth because both of them have mass, so they both have their own gravitational field strength. Because the Sun is so much more massive than the Earth, its gravity is much stronger than the Earth's is. Now, what's also true is that the closer two objects are to each other, the greater that force is going to be. So we have a person standing on the Earth, and that person is going to be attracted to the Earth's surface by gravity. Now, they're not going to be attracted towards the Sun, despite the fact the Sun has much stronger gravity, because they are closer to the Earth. Now, what's also very important 
is that the earth is attracted a very, very, very small amount to the person standing on the earth because the person standing on the earth has a little bit of mass, so we'll pull the earth a very small amount, but it's an absolutely negligible amount because the mass of a person compared to the earth is minuscule. So all objects with mass attract each other because all objects with mass have a gravitational field strength. The closer objects are to each other, the stronger that force of attraction is going to be. I just want to take a little break in this lesson to tell you a little bit more about Make Science Easy. And you can visit us at makescienceeasy.com. At our website, makescienceeasy.com, we have complete science courses for biology, chemistry, and physics. These are just like this lesson, but in lots more detail, covering everything that you need to know to pass your science exams. Every course, so the biology, the chemistry, and the physics, has over 65 lessons to it. Every lesson also includes printable resources, question and answer sheets to make sure you've understood, and multiple choice quizzes that you can take online and you get an immediate grade to see how much you've understood and if you've really learned the concepts. If you want to sign up for Make Science Easy and get access to all these lessons, there is a free trial, but at the checkout, if you want to purchase full access, you can save 50% by entering the code YT50. Now it's important that we understand how we can measure the mass and the weight of different objects. And we weigh things using scales and balances. So we can weigh an apple and it has a weight of 84.52 grams. But actually it's not its weight that we're measuring, it's the object's mass. So it has a mass of 84.52 grams. In order to find its weight, we need to multiply the mass by the rate of g, by gravity. Now we know that weight equals mass times g, or w equals mg. So, 84.52 grams times 10 newtons per kilogram is going to give us a weight of 0 0.084 kilograms, because we need to convert grams into kilograms, times 10 newtons per kilogram, the unit of gravity, which gives this apple a final weight of 0 0.84 newtons. Now we can use a newton meter or a force meter also to measure something's weight. Now, when we say newton meter, we're we'll talking about an object designed to measure force. However, a newton meter with a little gap in between the words, is a type of force, it is a turning force. And it's very easy to confuse the two things, so just be careful with that. So, in order to use our force meter, objects are hung off the end and we can then measure their weight in newtons. What's really, really important is that when we talk about weight, that we need to understand that it's dependent on the force of gravity. So, some planets in our solar system are more massive than others. The more massive a planet is, the stronger its gravitational field strength is going to be. Different gravitational field strengths cause the weight of an object to change. Because remember, weight is dependent on the mass of an object and the force of gravity acting on it. So on Earth, an astronaut in their spacesuit has a mass of about 120 kilograms. So what happens to their mass and their weight if they were to travel to different planets? We know that weight equals mass times gravity. And we can find out the gravitational field strength on different planets. So on Earth, it's 10 newtons per kilogram. On Mars, it's 3.7 newtons per kilogram. On Jupiter, it's 24.8 newtons per kilogram. On Saturn, it's 10.4 newtons per kilogram. And on Pluto, it's 0.62 newtons per kilogram. So, unsurprisingly, Jupiter is the most massive of these planets, and Pluto, which is no longer a planet, is the least massive of them. Now, on Earth, the mass is 120 kilograms, and the weight is 1,200 newtons. Weight equals mass, 120 kilograms, multiplied by gravity, 10 newtons per kilogram, giving us an answer of 1,200. 
on Mars, the mass is 120 kilograms because mass does not change. Mass is not affected by gravity. Mass is a measure of the amount of matter something is made up of. So, in order to calculate the weight, we need to multiply mass, 120 kilograms, by 3.7, the rate of gravity, which gives us 444 newtons. On Jupiter, the mass is still 120 kilograms. However, the weight is going to be 120 kilograms multiplied by 24.8, the gravitational field strength, giving us a weight of 2,976 newtons. Again, on Saturn, the mass is 120 kilograms. Mass does not change. To find the weight, we multiply 120 by 10.4, the gravitational field strength, and we have a weight of 1,248 newtons. Finally, on Pluto, again, mass 120 kilograms. Mass never, ever, ever changes. I really want to make that clear. And to find out the weight, we multiply the mass by gravity, which is 0 0.62, which gives us 74.4 newtons as the weight on Pluto. So we can see mass never changes, but the weight is dependent on how strong the force of gravity is. Just to reiterate, the mass of an object remains constant regardless of the strength of gravity. Mass is not affected by gravity. The weight of an object changes with the strength of gravity. We can deduce that Jupiter is the most massive of these planets because it has the strongest gravity. And therefore Pluto must be the least massive because it has the weakest gravity. In summary, mass is a measure of how much matter something is made up of. Mass is measured in grams or kilograms. Weight is a force created by gravity acting upon any object with mass. Weight is measured in newtons. We can calculate weight using weight equals mass times gravity. Mass can be measured with scales or a balance and then converted into weight by multiplying that mass by gravity. Or we can measure weight directly with a force meter. The weight of an object can change as gravity gets stronger or weaker, but the mass of an object is constant. So I hope you now know the difference between mass and weight. I hope you know the units of mass and weight. I hope you know what causes weight. I hope you know what creates mass. And I hope you know how to calculate the weight of an object and how the weight of an object varies as gravity changes. Until next lesson, Keep on learning.